Hey, welcome back to another video. Uh, today, we're going to be just doing a project overview um, of this little audio reactive particle sim. Uh, but I'm just going to throw it out there. This is just basically a thank you to the YouTube community um, uh, for hitting 1,000 subscribers. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So this project file is completely free. Um, it is linked on my Patreon, but you don't need to pay for a subscription to access it. You just have to go to the Patreon and download it there. I just keep all my files centralized on that platform. Um, but yeah, I, I put out a little community post. Everyone voted for <laughs> an audio reactive visual. And so uh, my thought process was, hey, this stuff's really popular in Touch Designer. Let's create one that people can download, plug in their own music, and try to sort of understand. So I was just going to post a video of demonstrating it, but instead I'm uploading this video. I'm going to quickly go over each of the components and what's kind of happening. But this is not a tutorial. This is more like, hey, this file is here if you want it. Go and download it. Here's how you make changes to it. Here's how you craft it. Uh, but otherwise... I'm just going to dive straight in. So I'm actually playing music right now. So I'm just going to stop the music. Um, there you go. And it will come right down eventually. There we go. <laughs> just uh, proof that it is audio reactive. Cool. So what we have here is we have our audio. I have an audio device in here. If you want to use an audio file, you just grab an audio file like so and plug it in like that. Or you drag and drop your file um, in, like MP3, for MP3 file into Touch Designer and plug it into the math and audio device out to hear it. Essentially what's happening is I have generated a shape, technically two shapes, and I am using a bunch of noise to craft a random particle like dance in the sky. Um, and that's happening where I just played around with a lot of things. I used a displace here. I used... Um, a composite uh, and you see here what I'm going for is disabling some of these operations I have a threshold here maybe you want to play around with this threshold what happens when you do that sort of thing what happens if I turn this math all the way up oh that's intense it went away let's bring it back down and reset it stuff like that um, essentially I just was playing around tweaking and crafting uh, the look of the particle shape, which is all done in these operators here, these purple ones mostly. So if you want to play with the look of it, um, again, this is all basically done through noise, although it is has a base shape of a sphere, so you can probably incorporate that if you want to. I suggest playing around with um, operators such as composites and scrolling through these different options like so. Um, play with the maths, the thresholds, the noise parameters as well if you click on say this final piece of noise here and then um turn like the exponent down the exponent sorry the exponent down or the exponent all the way up you'll get different kinds of behaviors that's them being um mapped onto this geometry of which you can use uh, particles as your source or you can replace it with spheres uh which will make them you know like a solid object you can actually zoom into alternatively you can also replace the sphere with anything really rectangles uh for example um but that is a 2d shape so you might want to do a cube instead or your own 3d object if you want to have a bunch of little ones of those but that might be very computationally intensive uh these components sort of just render that all out and then we get our uh, particles like so here then we have a bunch of post-processing so i have a luma blur which is applying like a blur to the middle um if I disable that, you see that get that sort of effect. Maybe you like this, maybe you don't. Play around with it. We have our feedback loop, which gives us our first initial trail. Um, if I bring the level of this one right down, you can see that we get different kinds of uh, feedback going on. Maybe you like it quite little. With our bloom, uh, which has a audio reactive component plugged in, um, I should also mention the noise parameters so you can see here there's all these dotted lines shooting out from the audio analysis towards the noise basically because the shape the way we make it dance to the music is by having parameters of these noise such as the 4d transformation um controlled by the speed of the song or the kicks and stuff like that so we essentially want to use uh, noise manipulation 
But that being said, there's no reason why you can't actually take uh, elements from, say, this count and apply that to uh, items of the sphere at the base level. Um, and then additionally here we have the high frequency controlling the amount of bloom we have. Maybe we want to bring the f uh, intensity up and make that bloom much more intense. Maybe you want to bring the bloom right down, then bring the intensity up and then individually bloom them like that. We then have an RGB delay, which, you know, delays the RGB. If I turn that off, we get that. And if I turn it all the way up, we get that. Feedback edge, again, these are more just post-processing filter effects. Play around with them, see what you like, see what you don't like. I'm going to keep that one up. Uh, we have a second feedback edge going on here. We then have a composite, which combining the delay, the edge, the noise. Um, maybe you don't want to bring the edge in. You can disable it like that. Maybe you want to do a screen with the noise to give it that sort of texture like that. Uh, we have a displace going on here with uh, this feedback edge basically just doing a little bit of displacement. If I turn that off, you can see that we get much more finer detail. And then an RGB key to give us a black background and then a um, no, sorry, I'm just going to toggle reset on those feedback edges so it looks a little bit better. But yeah, that's essentially everything that's going on in this Audio Active sim. Um, again, just wanted to do a quick little video to thank you guys so much for hitting 1,000 subscribers. I n did not create this channel intending to do so. I literally had so many people asking me to show them how to use Touch Designer. I was like, I'm just going to... I'll record some videos for you guys and then you can watch them in your meantime and then it somehow reached a bunch of y'all is also so that's awesome I'm very happy about that I want to continue to do so again if you have any specific requests for touch designer videos and tutorials let me know I really try to run off the business model of making all of my content um, aside from personal projects basically every tutorial I make I want to be free to follow so you don't have to pay anything whatsoever but obviously if you want to access the files um, as well as other work that I do then I do have the Patreon uh, which is slowly growing but um, just even a little bit there is helping me you know to keep this all going so I just want to thank you guys so much for all the support on YouTube on Patreon online I want to continue to create doing awesome beginner content maybe doing some more advanced tutorials soon uh, and just continuing to explore all the different things we can do in Touch Designer. So yeah, thank you so much, and enjoy playing around with this project file. Tag me in something if you make something on Instagram. I love seeing when you guys do that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I hope this is useful. I hope you can go in here and uh, play around with these parameters. If you don't know how this all works, look up Particle Sim Instancing... I have my own tutorials on it as well where I build essentially very similar files to this from scratch which explains the process of everything going on but that's not the point of today's video so again thank you so much for subscribing and I will see you guys in the next one peace